Hi everybody, so for this video, I'm just going to do a chill video. I kind of was thinking about my next collection and how I was going to do kind of more of a Greek mythology collection. Um, I got a lot of votes in my Facebook group about doing one and um, a lot of people just wanted uh, mythical creatures and stuff. So. so I also apologize for background noises. I have my studio open today. It's such a nice day. It's like 60 something I am just enjoying the sunshine so um, I apologize if that means there's a little bit more background noise than usual I opened my garage door so that's probably why it's a lot of light back here anyways it was a bit of a fight for me because I wanted to kind of play with um, Greek mythology and how the Greeks did pottery and stuff but also there wasn't a lot of color used in you know um, old Greek pottery and stuff like that. It was mostly like blacks and reds and things like that. And um, I tend to like a lot brighter colors and use a lot more colors in my work. So I was kind of just mulling over how I wanted to go about it. When I remembered that there was this uh, technique, which is very similar to Sgraffito, um, but it's called Mishima. And it would allow me to get kind of those those scenes, those those grand scenes that they painted on the pottery, but still have a lot of the color and stuff that um, I usually use with my pottery. So, so I figured that's what I talk about in this video. We're gonna go over um, how I Mishima um, and just you know the whole process. Talk about the tools that you'll need and just yeah, I kind of go about um, getting ready for doing this next collection that I'm launching. Um, so yeah. So these are leather hard pieces. I have gone ahead and trimmed them and now similar to Scraffito, I'm just going to be applying an underglaze to the piece. Okay, now that we have the underglaze applied everywhere, I put about two layers of the underglaze on this piece. So it's a little bit of a darker black. Um, so now that this piece is all ready to go, we're going to apply some wax to it. And now that we have the wax applied, we're just going to let those sit and dry for a bit and then I will show you the rest of the process.
So now that we have put the underglaze on, waxed, and then carved out the design, the last step before I put it in the bisque is going to be um, doing like an underglaze wash on it. So I would usually take my underglaze, water it down a little bit, um, so you can still really see the pigment, but it makes it a little bit easy to spread onto the piece. And we're just gonna slather and brush it all over the piece. And then once it dries a little bit, you know, it's not tacky anymore. And we are going to just kind of wipe off the surface. And the wax will keep the underglaze from adhering to the places that we didn't carve out. And we'll leave underglaze in the places that we did carve out. Oh, a boat with closed sails. And then over here is a boat with open sails, and then you can see it's got the water on the bottom. This one, we just did like a f kind of fire carving design on the bottom, and then the firebird on the top. So for this piece, I'm going to do a black underglaze wash, and that's the only color we're going to be putting on here. And then for this one, I'm actually going to do like a layering of yellow and orange and red um, to kind of make the firebird stand out more and the fire to stand out more. So this one won't be black necessarily. I'm going to try to use some brighter colors to see if that works. So you can see it's a little more liquidy than my underglaze usually is. Um, but you can still see it's pretty black. There's still quite a bit of pigment in there. Whoa, that wax is just repelling where we put it, and then the carving is what's getting the, the wash. We're just going to go back over and make sure we get all those carvings filled. And it's okay if it splashes where you don't want it, you can always go back and wash it off. And we're gonna get the bottom. There we go. Alright. So as you can see, we've got the underglaze where we want it, and the carved areas, and the wax is repelling it from the others. And we're gonna set that aside, and then we're going to clean it up after the underglaze is dried for a bit. I might go ahead and clean the bottom really quick right now, but as far as with the wax and the underglaze and stuff, you want to let it sit for a bit before you wipe it back. Color, so I also have orange here, and this was already pretty watered down, so I didn't really need to add a ton of water to it. So we're just gonna go in and paint over orange. Try to get it in those spots. I think next time I might add more wax too and wax the bottoms so I don't have to worry about all the extra underglaze getting on the mug under. Now I'm just going to add red over the top of parts of it. Get some of the spots I missed with the orange and the black. We're just gonna take a big sponge and wipe it away. As you can see, it's coming off of the wax part, but leaving a lot of the design behind. And then I went back over with the dryer sponge just to get all the extra little goobies and extra black hanging around off the piece. So you can see how it's just left a lot of that black in the lines that we wanted. Here we go. And then we have this one. It still needs a little bit of cleaning up. I'm working on it. Just going in with a smaller sponge to get all the little extra areas that have underglaze left on them and yeah so it'll be really cool we'll see how they turn out
I hope you enjoyed that video. So I won't unfortunately be able to show you the entire results yet. Um, this was kind of just going to be a video about me doing Mishima and kind of the process and how I go about doing it. Um, and things that I've learned because like I said it's been a while since I've done Mishima so there's definitely some things I'm going to, to do next time that I wasn't aware I needed to do this time. <laughs> like waxing the bottoms um, and things like that. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, as far as seeing the results, um, you will get to see how they turn out and everything. Usually, every time I launch a collection, I will show you the entire process and the different pieces and how they turned out. Um, I usually kind of show you from beginning to end, me throwing and making the pieces and stuff. So, you'll probably see a little bit of Mishima in there too um, from this video. But, uh, anyways, so you will be able to see what they look like bisked and glazed and fired and what the final products end up being once the collection launches. So, that's something to look forward to if you really wanted to see how they completely turned out. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you get notified when I upload that video and you can kind of see how the whole thing turned out once I finished doing the compilation video. Um, but I wanted to thank you guys for watching and I hope you had fun with me uh, kind of relearning a new technique because uh, it's been a while since I've done it. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!